Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are excited you are here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are there and ready and available to answer any questions you have. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. And lastly, the recording will be available a week from today. All sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Minnesota. For tonight, we are in session F6, exactly where my mouse is circling. And so without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our first presenter from Columbia College, Chicago. Great, thanks, Catherine. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right. All right, so my name is Sam. I am the Associate Director of National Admissions from Columbia College, Chicago. I work specifically with students from Minnesota, so I'm really excited to be here tonight and to tell you a little bit more about who we are at Columbia. Uh, so I want to start with some number some general information. We are a private nonprofit liberal arts school located in the heart of downtown Chicago. Um, we have about 7,000 students studying at Columbia, primarily in our undergrad program, but we also have a small graduate program. Uh, we have 60 different programs of study to choose from and about 50 different minors that you could add on top of those. We are primarily a, a creative and media art school with uh, majors in uh, both creative studies, uh, uh, in liberal arts, business, communication, um, with our most popular programs being film and television, for sure, theater, creative writing, graphic design, um, everything in between, anything creative, we have it. Um, we have 20 buildings on campus. So even though we're in the heart of downtown Chicago, because of the amount of buildings that we have and the amount of space that we take up in our neighborhood, uh, it still feels like a college campus, which is nice, even though you're in a sprawling city. Uh, we, again, um, being in Chicago, being um, located in a place that's known for being a melting pot of people from all over the country and all over the world, we like to think that our student body mirrors that reality. So we have students from all 50 states and over 60 different countries. 49% of our student body identifies as student of color. 27% identify as LGBTQIA and 22% are first generation college students. We like to consider our students storytellers no matter what they're studying at Columbia, whether it be something like creative writing when you're literally telling stories or advertising, art direction, marketing, filmmaking, whatever you're studying at Columbia, you're a storyteller. And in order to tell compelling stories, you have to be comfortable with meeting people and surrounding yourself by people that are different than you, um, that have different ideas and experiences and backgrounds and voices, because that only makes your work stronger as a storyteller. The average GPA for incoming students is a 3.34. So uh, when students apply to Columbia, they are automatically considered for two out of our three scholarships, but I will go over all three with you today. Uh, by applying to the college and sending in your transcript, you'll be automatically considered for our merit-based scholarship. Filing the FAFSA, you'll automatically be considered for our need-based scholarship. And submitting a portfolio or audition, you'll be considered for our talent-based scholarship. Um, so those are our three incoming scholarships, or I'm sorry, three scholarships for incoming students. If you do all three things, you'll be considered for the most amount of institutional aid that we offer. 97% of our incoming freshmen receive scholarship and aid, um, and 96% of our incoming transfer students receive scholarship and aid. So there's a good chance that you'd be in that number. The average package for incoming freshmen is 25,849 versus 24,765 for transfer students. All right, 
So a little bit more about our learning environment and our campus in general. Um, we are hands-on from year one, which means that students start within their major right away. We want students to have all four years to hone their craft and their skill within their major, but also to start taking advantage of the opportunities that exist in the city of Chicago outside of our own campus at Columbia as soon as you can. So that by taking courses in your major right away, you have those foundationals, you have that foundational knowledge, and you can start taking advantage of the opportunities in Chicago. Um, we have small class sizes, on average 18 students or less to one professor, and our faculty are comprised of um, those who are still working in their field. So you're learning from people that are currently designing and creating and making and directing, um, so on and so forth. So you're learning from people that have a very current knowledge of the creative industries um, that we teach at Columbia, which is super important, I think, um, right now as a creative to know what's happening in the industry, but also what's going to happen in the industry um, when you're done with us at Columbia. Here is a snapshot of the programs that we offer. We have BA degrees, we have BFA degrees, we have Bachelor of Music degrees, we have Bachelor of Science degrees. Um, students, when they apply to the college, they're admitted based on their academic merit um, and writing sample and all that, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, but if you're admitted to the college, you're admitted to your program. Unless you are interested in one of our direct entry BFA programs. Um, and in that case, it is required to, of course, apply to the college, but also submit a portfolio or audition. Um, students can major in one program, minor in another, you could major in a program, double minor, you can double major, you could do what I did when I was a student at Columbia and major in one thing and then take your elective credits in any creative discipline that we offer, period, across campus. So there's a lot of different ways to graduate from Columbia, but we have the staff and the resources available to make sure that you can get that all in. We're also a liberal arts college, so students uh, do complete a full liberal arts curriculum while they're with us, English, math, history, science, humanities, all that good stuff. We also have about 70 different clubs and organizations on campus um, that students take advantage of. We have tons of events on campus, open mic nights, film screenings, comedy clubs, all of that included and this is uh where you'd go to apply so we are a uh, holistic review school so we'll look at everything you send to us holistically we look for reasons to admit not reasons to deny we have always been test optional and we are uh, in the next couple of years hopefully going to be fully test blind, um, but we are a test optional school. Um, auditions and portfolios, again, vary by major, so it depends on what you'd like to study, and you can apply either with the Common App or with our application. This is my contact information, so if you have any other questions, I'd love to talk to you. Otherwise, that's it from me. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Our next presenter is from Kansas State University. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today as I share my screen. Uh, my name is Nicole Bartle, and I'm one of our admissions representatives at Kansas State University. I'm originally from Los Angeles, California, moved to Kansas just to go to K-State and love my experience so much. I'm still here after six years. Um, I got my degree in psychology with a minor in Spanish so I can totally attest to what it was like to be as a student and your admissions representative who's actually Chase Wynn also is a K-State grad. So we're always happy to talk a little bit more about what our experiences were like as students. But to get into all the big information about who K-State is, um, we are a large four-year um, public research institution but that's part of the Big 12. So if you're looking for a Power Five conference school, you um, found us in the right spot. And um, when we're thinking about our student population, we have about 22,000 students on campus with an 18 to one student to faculty ratio. 
So I always say K-State's a really great fit for students looking for that larger institution with a close-knit family feel as well. Some of the my favorite statistics that you see on the screen about K-State are we were voted number one for happiest students and number two for students love their college, which we really love because our students are passionate about being K-Staters and really enjoy their time on campus. Now, two of the biggest statistics that are on this screen that I really like to point out as well is our number one highest starting salary in the state of Kansas and our 97% job placement and continuing education rate. We wanna be there to support you into your next goals and make sure that you feel confident that if you choose to come to K-State, we're helping you get to that next level and next um, your next goal. So we invite over 900 global employers to campus every single year. So whether you wanna stay in Kansas, go across the nation or even work abroad after graduation, you have those opportunities to start making those connections starting even your freshman year. Now a big part of um, kind of going through your college search and figuring out what you want to do and where you want to go is thinking about academics. We are a strong comprehensive university that offers over 250 majors and over 50 different minors on campus. You'll notice all of our different academic colleges listed on the screen, but we really value being able to customize what your degree is going to look like and customize your academic experience. So as I mentioned, I majored in psychology, got my minor in Spanish, but we want you to find those passions and really figure out exactly what you want to do and how K-State can help you with those educational goals. We want our students to get involved outside of the classroom. So although academics are really important, we want you to have that holistic collegiate experience when you get to K-State. Undergraduate research is definitely one big thing that we really value in our students. So getting those hands-on experiences, regardless of if you are in education, getting into a classroom, in engineering, architecture, business, whatever that might look like, we want you to get those hands-on experiences while you're on campus and help you stand out among the rest when you are applying to graduate school and applying for jobs afterwards. We have over 500 different clubs and organizations on campus, so definitely ways to find your fit and find your passions outside of just the classroom. So whether you wanna get involved in a religious organization, a multicultural group, or a random club like squirrel watching club or skydiving club, we have all of those different pieces for you to have a little bit of fun outside of the classroom. Now we wanna make sure that we're helping make K-State affordable for you, but also thinking of getting into the university. So on the left-hand side of our screen, you're gonna see our different admission work criteria. Um, for high school seniors, if there's any seniors in the room, we are still admitting students and have extended our scholarship priority date to March 15th, which is Monday. Um, so you can still apply and be fully considered for our um, uh, all university awards. To be admitted to K-State, we just need one of these three requirements for automatic admission. That's a 325 GPA, and that can be weighted or unweighted, a 21 on your ACT, or a 1060 on the SAT. Either one of those three things will get you automatically admitted. Our application process is super quick and easy, and for my juniors in the room, it will open this summer for you to start applying. We're also on the Common App. If you're already applying to multiple schools, feel free to list K-State off of there as well. But we will make admissions decision and initial scholarship decisions based off of just your self-reported information. So just putting out there what your ACT or SAT is if you've taken it or what your GPA is and we can um, get you admitted to the university there. Our scholarship opportunities, um, uh, when you apply for the university, you're automatically applying for our general university awards, scholarships, and our different tuition waivers. Um, and again, it's just based off of your self-reported ACT or SAT and your GPA. We were also able to offer some test optional scholarships, knowing that getting into a test was a little bit more difficult this past year, um, which had a separate application for you to complete um, that's looking at leadership involvement and those types of pieces. The last area for K-State specific scholarships would be through our K-State Scholarship Network or the KSN, um, where you can apply for additional scholarships through your academic colleges, departments, and then any random scholarship that we might have across campus. Now, I wanna invite everyone to come visit campus. I know that really helped me as I was going through my college search to really find that best fit for me and where that campus felt like home. We're offering both, both virtual and on-campus visiting opportunities where you get to commit and connect with your academic um, areas, get on a campus tour with one of our students, and then also meet one-on-one -on -one with your academic um, 
or your admissions representative to make sure that we're answering any of those questions that you might have specific to your situation, seeing if K-State's gonna be that best fit for you and making sure that you feel confident in your college search. You'll see my contact information on the screen and I'll be sure to put that information on the chat as well. But we all have Calendly links for you to sign up for one-on-one -on -one appointments. Now I'm going over time. So um, thanks again for joining us tonight and go Cats. Thank you, very helpful information. Um, as we um, are uh, move to the next presentation, I just wanna say a reminder that if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those through the Q&A button near the bottom of your screen. Um, everyone is there ready to answer any questions that you have. And it's also helpful to also include the institution name. Our next representative is from Marquette University. All right, hello everyone. So good that you're here. Give me one second. I'll share my screen. Uh, oh, I didn't share. All right, perfect. So uh, the Timberwolves are playing tonight, but they are not so hot. Uh, and I am a fellow Minnesotan, um, just living in Wisconsin right now. Um, so I'm super, super happy to chat with you about Marquette and just provide you some uh, a little bit more information. Uh, all right, let's get it started. So Marquette is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, so if you're located around the Twin Cities area, it's going to be about a five to six, uh, six hour drive uh, to Milwaukee itself. Um, but Marquette is a medium sized Catholic Jesuit institution. Um, so it's not a requirement to be Catholic at Marquette, um, but about 60% of our students do identify as such. Um, and we are uh, 8,000 undergraduate strong, um, which I really believe gives you the best of both worlds, right? On the one hand, our class size are gonna be pretty small. Um, the average class size is 24. Our student to faculty ratio is 14 to one. Um, but at the same time, we are all about investing in our students and their success, right? Um, there is plenty of research opportunities um, and dedicated support staff on campus to ensure that you're as successful as possible when you're looking at postgraduate opportunities, right? Um, we have, uh, just to, to give you a little bit of context, um, the middle of the screen here is the heart of downtown Milwaukee. Um, and then the shaded portion is our campus. Um, so truly we are just blocks away uh, from the heart of Milwaukee. Uh, and I really enjoy just the size of the city itself. It's very manageable and allows students to kind of get out there and explore all of the great offerings that Milwaukee has. We have seven different colleges for students to be considered for. Um, I think it's a really important thing to know that Marquette is a direct entry institution. Um, so when you're applying for admission at Marquette, whether it be through the common application, through our, or our own application, um, you are being considered directly for the college of your choice, right? Um, so from day one, you're gonna be able to take classes in your desired program, um, which I really believe just creates a more collaborative learning environment, right? There, there's less pressure to get into a specific program, seeing that you and all of your other Golden Eagles already have been admitted, right? Um, across the board, you know, we want students to dive in and get those experiences um, that set themselves apart when they're looking at the, the workforce or graduate opportunities. Um, once they have graduated from Marquette, um, we are the number one school in Wisconsin for job placement rates and number six in the nation. Um, so we do a really good job of making sure our students are prepared as best as possible right, when they're looking to, to get into their career. Um, these seven colleges do a really nice job of um, covering a lot of different areas. Um, we have a, a, a around 80 different majors for you to look into um, and a lot of popular demands, uh, high demand majors um, are available for you at Marquette. Um, and we also have those opportunities to extend your uh, professional education with us. We have the only school of dentistry in the state of Wisconsin one of the two law schools, and then a pretty robust graduate school um, where there are programs that you can apply for as a junior um, and start that master's program your senior year and then have one more year of studies, right? Our accelerated degree programs. Um, so again, another way to kind of maximize your time and value at Marquette, um, which is a really fabulous thing. Also through the admission process, um, there are programs that you can be considered for direct entry um, for the graduate schools, um, including the School of Dentistry uh, Law School uh, and our graduate school um, that you can include on your admission application. Um, 
So when you're going through this college search process and you're applying to Marquette, um, I'm going to be your go-to person. Uh, so if you have questions about all that stuff, it's really, really helpful for you to kind of get connected with me uh, so I can make sure that you are being given the right information and that you're as successful as possible. All right, so we have a lot of uh, important resources available to you online, given that kind of COVID has shook a lot of things up for folks. Um, we have made a lot of our content available online. Um, everyone can request an individual appointment with me. We can have a conversation, get to know each other a little bit better, uh, which has been really great, um, especially if you're not just able to come you know, to, to Milwaukee at any given time, right? Um, as well as a lot of different um, resources with our colleges um, and connecting with current students. I think it's a really great, uh, really great addition um, for folks this year. We'll see, am I missing anything? Uh, in terms of the admissions process, um, like I said, Common App or our own application, both are free to apply um, and we are test optional. Um, so we do not require a test score. This is our second year of doing so. Um, so it's worked out pretty well for us. Um, and you can still apply for all of our academic programs as well as our scholarships, right? So every single student is being considered for, uh, you know, their, their desired starter Marquette, you know, even if they don't have a test score to submit. Uh, so I think that's a really, really great thing to know as well. Okay, I kind of just cruise through all of that. So if you kind of missed it, here's my contact information. Uh, like I said, I am a fellow Minnesotan living in Wisconsin right now. Um, so I'm happy to chat with you about, you know, how the Timberwolves are very, very depressing. Um, but we can cheer for the Bucks together, right? That is A-OK, -okay, right? We can all cheer for Giannis. So, um, so yeah, that's my contact information and I'm happy to answer any questions tonight. Thank you. Um, for all the great information that's being shared, we really appreciate it. Our next representative is from Minnesota State University, Man Cato. Man Cato, yes, Cato. thank you so much. Yes, uh, good, you're very welcome. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Emily, and I am an admissions representative from Minnesota State University, Man Cato. Very happy to be connecting with you all. I'm going to jump in and um, get us started with some general information about MSU. Um, beginning with our location, MSU is located in Mankato, Minnesota, which is in the south central part of the state, conveniently just about 85 miles south of the Twin Cities metro area. Um, so if you are from the Twin Cities area, it's a nice day trip, really from anywhere um, in the state. I'm from rural sub southeast Minnesota, I'm about two hours away and a good distance away from home. We were founded a long, long time ago, back in 1868. We started as a college just for teachers, but of course we have since expanded. And we now have over 130 different programs or majors uh, for you to explore as a student here. Our current student population is around 14,500. And I would say that we are a medium-sized university. Um, when I was a student here not too long ago, now I'd walk through campus, I definitely didn't know everybody, of course, but I would usually see a good amount of familiar faces. And I really enjoyed that balance of being on a medium-sized campus. And even with 14,000 students, we do still see a student to faculty ratio of 20 to 1, which means that on average, your class sizes here will be around 20. We see a 93% job placement rate, we're a national leader in undergraduate research, and we have over 200 recognized student organizations that are run by our students and a great way for you to get involved outside of your classrooms. Now I do want to point out we do offer a virtual tour available on our website. So if you'd like to check out our campus, this is a great way to do so. But we also are currently open for in-person tours as well. So if you're wanting to make a trip down to Mankato, uh, swing by and we'd love to have you. As I mentioned, we do have over 130 different majors for you to explore and eventually select. Our top five most popular majors are biology, nursing, psychology, business management, and elementary education. I also like to share some of our more unique majors, including aviation, construction management, sports management, dental hygiene, and our theater program. And again, more information is available on our website since we do have so many majors that uh, there's a lot out there to learn. 
Across our university, we offer many, many services and resources for our students to utilize. I'm just going to highlight a few of those quickly for you here tonight, uh, starting with our learning communities. We offer over 20 learning communities where students can live and learn among peers who are similar to them in their academic majors, their interests, or their identities. So you would live on a residence hall floor with students who are studying the same major or um, a shared identity, such as being a first generation student. Um, so that's a really great experience to get some extra academic and social support through that transition from high school to the college setting. Uh, I do also like to mention MSU's value of diversity. We believe that having a diverse campus is really important for all of our Maverick community to be contributing members of uh, our greater society. So we extend a very warm welcome to students of every background and culture, and we have a very extensive and active division of diversity and inclusion who hosts lots of educational events, but also uh, fun activities for our entire campus to enjoy. College is also about you know, making friends and having fun, growing your leadership abilities and exploring your interests. And there's lots of ways to do that at Mankato through our vibrant campus life. As I said, we do have over 200 recognized student organizations, everything from clubs related to your major, cultural or religious based groups, service special interest groups, club and intramural sports and much more. We are NCAA Division I for our men and women's hockey teams. They are very good at what they do. Um, and Division II for all of our other athletic teams. So if you're interested in sports, whether participating or just cheering them on, uh, lots of ways to get involved. And of course, um, lots of ways to get involved and stay active on campus and in the community in other ways as well. Now, MSU has something known as automatic admission requirements, which means that any student who meets just one of the three criteria on the screen would be guaranteed automatic acceptance to the university. So that's if you're in the top 50% of your high school class, or you have a cumulative GPA of a 3.0 or higher, or you have a 21 or higher composite score on the ACT exam. As you can see, we also will look for you to meet minimums in the other areas, but if you have one of those, it's likely that uh, you will. So you can see for that automatic admission. Our application process is very simple and straightforward. We do not use the Common App, so you will have to fill out the Minnesota State App on our website. We just need your high school transcripts and your ACT scores if you have had or will have the opportunity to take the exam. As you can see, we are test optional through the fall of 2022. Uh, I just want, briefly want to mention uh, living on campus is a great choice and we do have five beautiful residence communities that you would be able to choose from, though it is not required to live on our campus. Uh, some of our academic year uh, review on our website, we are a very affordable option, but also providing you high quality education and experiences. And that's my time. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, again, let us know if you have questions in the Q&A feature. Otherwise, feel free to reach out to me in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Um, our next presentation is from Normandale Community College. Hello. My name is Steve Murray. And my, I want to introduce my colleague, Javier Salinas Vega. And we are going to hopefully show, um, I'm going to talk about, um, we're going to start registration April 5th for fall semester. And we will also start, um, uh, okay, thank you. We got our website up here. We're, um, we do not charge an application fee for admission. So you can go to our website and apply for admission and apply online which you can see on our website here. If you go to www.normandale.edu. 
April 5th, we start our registration for admission. All students are admitted if they have a high school diploma or GED. We send students to main, a lot of four-year colleges with a lot of the schools that you're seeing here. Um, we are having an open house on Tuesday, May 4th at 5 to 7 p.m. It's a virtual open house. And we will talk about that if you're interested in um, attending that. I'm gonna show, a, or we are gonna show a video that talks about Normandale and you can see our campus. And we're gonna start that here. Oh, we have to unmute. No. Are you trying to play the audio? Oh, yes. Uh, I apologize. I apologize. Is the audio not uh, playing from your side? The audio is not playing. Yeah. No. All right. Let me try to fix it very quickly for you guys. Apologize for I that. I apologize. All right. We should be all set. My name is Taylor Gore, and I'm a student at Normandale Community College. Normandale provides a wide variety of high-quality courses at an affordable price. Let me show you why Normandale is a great place to be. Normandale offers an extraordinary education with an exceptional value with a tuition three times less than the University of Minnesota and six times less than the average cost of a private four-year university in Minnesota. We are the largest community college in the state, but our campus is still a close-knit community because of the high-touch services and resources provided by instructors in student service areas. There are 75 degrees and certificates and over 600 courses that get you to where you want to go. Normandale's online and in-person course offerings are the largest in any two-year college in Minnesota. Whether you are looking to take a wide variety of quality STEM courses, pursue a career in nursing or dental hygiene, complete an AFA or business degree in nationally accredited programs, explore the vast liberal arts and humanities offerings, or complete general courses for the Minnesota Transfer Curriculum, you can find the program to start your academic journey. Normandale has a 24 to 1 student to teacher ratio. Our instructors have received regional and national awards honoring their teaching excellence and commitment to student success. Along with quality academic offerings, Normandale provides top-notch online student resources through its advising and counseling departments, tutoring center, and office for students with disabilities. Those resources combine with comprehensive academic support programs like the Academy of Math and Science, and TRIO Student Support Services create opportunities for a well-rounded educational experience. My name is Shelby Lingle and I'm a student at Normandale Community College. Normandale provides a great student experience inside and outside of the classroom. Let me show you why Normandale is the place to be. Developing leaders inside and outside of the classroom is an important part of the mission at Normandale. We have over 50 student life clubs and organizations, including a nationally recognized Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, and an award-winning student senate. Programs like Pillars of Leadership and the Normandale Program Board provide many opportunities to develop skills in leadership and organization. Through these experiences, we strive to create a diverse and inclusive campus community that will help you accomplish your goals. Normandale's campus has a modern look and feel and plenty of open outdoor spaces to enjoy when the weather is nice. The Partnership Center and the COP Student Center have accessible group study areas with natural light and many social opportunities. Our Japanese garden, campus green, newly updated courtyard, and hiking trail provide beautiful outdoor spaces to enjoy on campus. You will also find updated classrooms and computer centers and highly collaborative lab areas. This state-of-the-art feel continues to expand through our College Services Renovation Project 
which will provide a new cafe area, centralized student services, and updated classrooms and group study areas. Normandale offers 13 bachelor's degrees through partner universities on campus and is a top transfer institution for Minnesota State Universities, the University of Minnesota, and private universities across Minnesota. We have partnered with Minnesota State four-year universities to offer 19 transfer pathways, the most of any two-year college in the state. Along with local universities, Normandale students have proven they can start here and transfer anywhere, as they have recently transferred to Harvard, Cornell, Columbia, Duke, USC, and Michigan, to name a few. No matter what your final goal is, Normandale will navigate the way there. To find out more, contact our admissions office at 952-358-8201 or email admissions at normandale.edu. Awesome, thank you so much. So we are now going to um, pass it over to our last presenter of the evening um, from Suffolk University. Hello everyone, let me get my screen share going right now. Awesome, there we go. Again, hello everyone, my name is Patrick Dean and I'm an admission counselor here at Suffolk University. We are located right in the heart of downtown Boston, Massachusetts. I don't know if you have ever been to Boston before, feel free to in the chat if you want to, like we're in the uh, uh, participant section, raise your hand if you've ever been to Boston before. But we're located right in the middle of the city. So if you've ever been and maybe visited the Granary Bearing Ground, where you see Paul Revere or uh, Sam Adams gravesite over there, or you could also be located right next to the old Massachusetts State House where the Boston Massacre uh, happened right there inside One Court Street, which is our newest residence hall that we have on campus, and also the first skyscraper ever built in the city of Boston. Here, you're surrounded by everything that the city has to offer, with all the different sports teams, museums, companies, coffee shops, MBTA stations. Everything is right at your fingertips, and you're as much a Bostonian as you are a Suffolk University student. These little T markers right over here is our subway system, so it's very easy to transverse the city, and you do get discounted T passes, so it's very easy to take care of advantage of all of that. Because as you can see, the streets in Boston clearly make absolutely no sense. They were actually paved over old cow paths, so taking the T in the Underground Railroad system is so much easier. We have uh, over 70 undergraduate programs between the College of Arts and Sciences and the Sawyer Business School. Take a quick minute just to take a look and see what some majors stick out to you. Um, a lot of students like to go into any type of business, whether it be entrepreneurship, management, or especially going into big data and analytics, which is a field that's been really growing lately. A lot of our students love to go into psychology or really try to set themselves up for a law degree as well, because we do have our own law school on campus. We offer pathways to advanced degrees through our three plus three law program where you do three years as an undergraduate student and jump straight into three years in your JD. And we also have accelerated master's programs as well to help you do your four years of undergrad and then transition and do one year of graduate studies to get your master's degree. Right now we have just under a thousand under, or just under 5,000 undergraduate students on campus. We try to keep an average class size of about 21 students and we have an average student faculty ratio of just about 15 to one. Probably my favorite stat about us is about 99% of our students are working or in graduate school within a year after graduation. While classwork is obviously going to be the key part of any college experience, it's not the only thing about the college experience that you can get involved in. We have just over 100 clubs and organizations that you can take part in. I believe Video Gamers Army and Women in Business are the two biggest clubs that we have right now. And we also have a great student government association who does a lot of fantastic work on campus. Um, setting up events for students. I know in 2018 and 2019, we had Post Malone and Tory Lanez come to campus for a concert respectively. So they've been doing phenomenal stuff with that. Or you can take part in a Boston tradition called Dancing with the Stars, where you can dance with some uh, famous Bostonians. We also offer alternative winter break trips and spring break trips going down to Washington DC and Maryland to fight for racial justice. You can even go overseas to Cambodia to work with the Habitat for Humanity, go back down to DC and work for LGBTQ advocacy. There's so much to really get involved in here. Like I said already, there is so much that Boston gives our campus. So we try to give back to the city as much as we possibly can with our students doing over 20,000 hours of community service in the city last year. 
We're also home to 19 NCAA Division III teams between our men's and women's sports. We just moved into the Commonwealth Coastal Conference, so it's a very exciting time for us to hop into a new conference and get involved with new competitors. Um, our uh, men's track and field team won the championship last year, and this is actually a picture of when our uh, men's baseball team won their championship as well. Kind of a fun fact for us, our women's hockey coach um, was actually a player on the Buffalo Buttes during the National Women's Hockey League um, Isabel Cup Championship this year before it was sadly canceled, making her the only NCAA coach to play in the National Women's Hockey League. So kind of a little fun fact about us there. And we all like to open up the world to our students as well, offering a ton of study abroad and international experiences. Probably the keystone of that is gonna be our very own campus located in Madrid, Spain. Here, you can go there for as little as a summer program to a semester, two semesters, two years, or if you do something like international relations, you can actually spend all four of your years at the Madrid campus. It's also home to our Global Gateway program. This is where you can take your first year spring break and spend it at the Madrid campus. It's perfect for one, students looking to go to Spain during spring break. This is probably the easiest and cheapest way to take advantage of that. And two, Students who are really looking to get their feet wet in an international experience, see what the Madrid campus is all about and see if it's something that they like because it's not a big commitment and it's a lot of fun when students go on that trip. We're also partnered with over 30 different, uh, 50 different programs in over 30 countries. And like, like, from people, like people come from all over the world and all over the country to Boston, people do the exact same for Suffolk with right now 19% of our student body being international students and 34% identifying as students of color just over 20 cultural affinity organizations to really promote the diversity that we have on campus. For our application, we require either the common application or our own Suffolk application. We need your high school transcript, NA, essay, one letter of recommendation, and we are test optional. We're a test optional university. That's not changing anytime soon for us. Our application deadlines are November 15th for early action and February 15th for regular decision. If there are any seniors here right now, our a deadline got pushed to March 15th, so you still have a couple days to submit an application if you're still considering Suffolk or finding another school to go to. You can find my email right here, pdean2 at suffolk.edu. If you go on our admissions staff webpage, you can also schedule a virtual interview and a virtual meeting with me, where you can sit down and ask any questions you want. I also encourage you to take a look at our virtual tour, as it'll show you exactly where we are in Boston and give you a good view of all the sight lines right behind me. Thank you so much for your time today. Very helpful information. Thank you so much. That was from Suffolk University. Um, as we near the end of our webinar, we do have a little bit of time and we would like to segue into our Q&A portion. And so I can ask all the presenters at this time to turn on their video and unmute themselves for um, our question of the night. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and start in the order in which um, you all presented. And if we could have one representative from each institution to share. Thanks. Awesome. Um, so the advice that I would give someone going through the college search process would be to reach out to the admissions offices at the schools that you plan to apply to. Um, if you have a representative in that office who uh, is yours from start to finish, that's great. You could ask them a ton of questions, but it's also a good way to um, introduce yourself and, and tell the admissions rep why you're interested in that college, find out about tour options, deadlines, scholarships, all that good stuff. So reach out to the admissions office. I always say get on campus. It's going to give you that best feeling of, yep, this is going to be my home for the next four years and really start connecting with students. So talk to at least three students when you're on your campus tour um, to get a better idea of what their experience was like and see if you'd be a good fit. Oh, I think you're muted. I think Malik is having technical difficulties. I'll go, I think I'm next in yeah. line, but Malik, if you wanna unmute at any time, let us know. Um, I would echo what's been said already, connect with your um, colleges that you're interested in. All of the admissions rep are more than happy to connect with you. Get on campus if you can. And my piece that I would add is check your email. 
um, check your email <laughs> before you go to bed, after you wake up. Um, lots of important information is being sent there. Um, as a couple of the folks tonight said, you know, deadlines change um, and you, you don't want to miss updates, and especially in the ever changing world that we live in now. So check your email. All right, I promise you, I know how to work Zoom. Like the button was frozen, so it's not working. Like I know where it's at, looked at my computer, I figured it out. Um, I would really just echo everything that everyone has already said. Um, <clears throat> if you are assigned like a specific admission counselor or you're getting emails from a consistent email address, um, saving that email as a contact can really make sure that it's gonna get sent right to your inbox. I have heard plenty of times uh, about my emails or my office's emails going straight to that like promotional or, or spam folder. Um, so, so that can be really helpful. Um, but yes, they know everything that, you know, everyone has already said. I don't know if it's my turn yet or not, but um, I would recommend definitely doing either virtual or on-campus visits. Talk to financial aid, do your financial aid. If you haven't done it, do it now if you're a senior. Um, and then talk to faculty if you can and be early. If you haven't made up your mind on schools, apply at more than one school. Um, as I mentioned at our school, we start April 5th on registration. You can apply at more than one school. Early bird gets the worm. So that's my recommendation. Awesome, I'm last, so I'll go a little bit quick on this one. Again, echoing everything everyone said, uh, we're admission counselors, not denial counselors. So we're here to help you out as much as we possibly can. And on top of that too, doing what you're already doing right now, looking at a diverse range of schools, schools that are more urban, schools that are more rural, big schools, small schools, affordable schools, schools that are a little bit outside of your price range. Look at everything on the table for you and see what one might fit. It's all, you never know what one might really stick out to you. All great advice. Thank you so much to all our presenters um, for sharing um, all your knowledge and insight. I think it's always helpful to hear from those who are directly working in the schools and their respective institutions. So thank you. And thank you to all of you for joining us. Um, as we close, there will be a qu very quick four question survey that will appear. Um, if you can take a moment and fill that out and to give us some feedback, it will be really um, appreciated. And this recording will be available at strivescan.com backslash Minnesota for a week from today um, for you to rewatch later or share with others. Again, thank you so much and have a great night.